Excellent. So thank you everyone for joining this session. This is now um, the official start of the session, how open ecosystem empowers developers to digitalize industry. And the speaker is no other than Eric Pan, founder and CEO of Seed Studio. Welcome Eric and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you Mario and hi everyone. It's been too long that we cannot meet each other. I see so many old friends in the attendees and uh, I'm very looking forward to share today. Yeah, so, um, so just I would like to give a short introduction. Um, okay. uh, Eric, yeah, so Eric uh, um, is a maker and biker and founder of Seed Studio and um, Chai Hua X Factory. Um, he's a producer of Maker Fair Shenzhen and he's a believer in open source and crowd innovations. He endeavors to integrate the latest AI, IoT technology and supply chain resources to create an open platform for global developers to turn ideas into prototypes and solutions. His major effort is creating Seed since 2008 as a technology service company to provide open hardware and agile manufacturing services. Seed works closely with technology providers to offer an open modular and structured solution for IoT and AI. It also integrates the supply chain resources based in Shenzhen to help scale prototypes up to mass production. With all the works done to accelerate hardware Hello? Can you hear me? So there was a, a, a short issue uh, here with my uh, inter uh, with my connection, but I think uh, um, yeah, it was just very short time, right? Yeah, it's working now. Okay, excellent, it's working. So, um, uh, uh, Eric, actually, this mentioning of the of the biker that you are a biker, right? Uh, I think there's yeah. also a bigger story to this that like uh, people in China and so on they share that you um, uh, um, like you you worked in Silicon Valley, you worked in US, you had uh, different jobs, and then you came back to China and you didn't know um, like what would be the next steps in your life, and uh, you decided at one point to go around by bicycle in China, and then uh, you arrived in Shenzhen and you thought, okay, that's kind of the future. We can connect like. Um, all these open source communities and the ideas and passion for open source um, with the maker community and with the um, yeah, industry and um, all this hardware um, economy in Shenzhen. So I, I really like this story and I really like this uh, connection with, with, with a bike. Is that somehow true? Like what I said, is that a, a bit of a story? Thank you and uh, <laughs> thank you for mentioning it. And yes, that's true, but uh, I was basically in China and second round, like the journey continues. Like uh, as of seed, we have been spent 13 years. It's like feels the same as biking into uncertainty. It's a journey that nobody has ever done before and it's remote, but uh, you keep going and uh, it's wonderful. Excellent. So thank you very much for joining us and I will hand over to you and uh, give the time to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mario. Hi everyone, this is Eric and uh, like I just said, I'm super excited to talk, to talk to you virtually and looking forward to meet you very soon after the COVID. I'm glad things are coming down. So we even, it's like a little more silent during the COVID, we have a lot of experiments going on. We move a lot into industries. So i like to share today is uh, how open tech ecosystem really help old industries digitalize. So uh, a short introduction of Seed. We started with something like the interactive modules, but now we are doing some, <laughs> it's going very complex that we are doing more industrial stuff on the hardware. And the, there are some short facts we have trying to summarize. We started by making open source hardware from 2008, and we have thousands of the skill. And last year, we have shipped more than 2 million pieces of all kinds of hardware 
to global uh, developers. And uh, secondly, after we uh, distributed this uh, components, people come back to us asking for help for manufacturing because we are based in Shenzhen. We have access to all the supply chains. And uh, all the designs based on open source hardware are much easier for us to manage because they have shared supply chains. So we have been keep providing manufacturing services we could enjoy manufacture, even from us more like 10 pieces to all the way to mass scale manufacturers. And as the journey moves on for the last uh, like three, uh, four to five years, we have been doing a lot about industrial IoT. Like uh, making a little bit of macho is not enough to really survive in real scenarios. So we explore the requirements of the um, real industrial field needs. And we should also we have a lot of uh, research projects going all the way into real products. So for the last uh, 30 years, we have been working with a lot of uh, customers uh, all over the world. And also we partner with uh, from uh, startups to big companies to bring the latest uh, hardware uh, technologies to people. So we are very much surrounded by open source and we are a bel true believer of open source. In, and uh, I try to summarize in, uh, in a good way that uh, how closed source is becoming more disrupted by open source. In the beginning, before 1990s, is, uh, everything is almost uh, closed sourced from the, the infrastructure software to chipsets to all the hardwares. But uh, I think it's explosive after 2005. We have the first Arduino, we know we have uh, all the maker movement, everybody's hugging it. And it's immigrating from open source software to open source hardware. And uh, we are very uh, glad we are being part of it from 2008. We, I've shared the pain of other developers because I make stuff myself and I cannot access the open source hardware. And whenever I made the prototype, I cannot bring all the way to commercialized or uh, finished uh, products easily. So I established seed in 2008 and keep uh, providing all kinds of uh, uh, hardware modules and work with a lot of uh, prominent uh, partners. But as we look beyond from 2010 to as of today, there are more and more open source, open source of software is becoming dominant in uh, cloud services. It has been uh, dominant in a lot of uh, edge computing as well. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of more users, like uh, tens of millions of people, knows Arduino, knows open source, and use Raspberry Pi to create their own devices. We can, it's true, it's very confident for us, we see that open source is becoming more dominant and we are very happy to be part of it with you. So whenever the force Asher comes with the invitation, I think, okay, I gotta talk with the guys. There are a lot of new findings and observations we can share. And uh, the most important thing I, I feel that is that the people having more accessible technology, they become the new tech smiths. It's like black smiths or silver smiths. They are the um, to make sure they are the technology bringer of our generations. But with the support of more open source devices, they can bring more digital transformation to old industries. And uh, we are, for the last half many years, we have been uh, striving uh, on this part. So first of all, let's look at the text maze, which uh, probably means you and your friends around the community. We see a lot of uh, device prototypes uh, from the, the community. It's not only just, uh, okay, I light a LED with Arduino. It's people using the open tools, really trying to make some uh, solutions. It's not a full set of infrastructure, but it's, a, it's a, like a functional, it's a, um, a device with a vertical knowledge, with a specific know-how from the creator to users al alike. And we see people using uh, the open tools to make the like water quality sensoring, they use the voice interaction mirrors, they're making their own DJ equipments, they use it to predict the um, maintenance of the machines. We see a lot of open source devices. And uh, a lot of these uh, experiments, they are beyond um, traditional researchers. Like uh, one of our users, Benjamin Kebby, he using multiple channel gas sensors 
to tell from different alcohol using machine learning on a microcontroller level uh, computing. So we should all, whenever you make these technologies more accessible and the people are finding new ways to resolve their solutions, which is uh, amazing. And uh, uh, I think people, the community, the tech species will be beyond the education they are going all the way into machine learning through everyday practice, through contests, it's happening everywhere. I think you are know well about that. But let's look at it in a bigger picture. I feel that digital, digital transformation is uh, very important because of its diversity of devices. If you look at the cloud infrastructure, it uh, basically multiplies. A few companies, a few gens provide the cloud service for the majority of the companies using them. And uh, on the getaways, we say uh, a few like big players, everybody's using them, it's like the Nick. But when we go down to the things, you have too many diversity that you need to bring a new device into that. And it's, it cannot be created by single companies. It cannot be created by Apple that satisfy all the hardware needs. It should be from everyone. So that's, we see that's where the makers, makers, the startups, the hardware developers should become the legs of text means. And then we have the, we have created the maker space in Shenzhen called Chai Huo. And uh, for the last uh, like 80 years has becoming the base cap in Shenzhen. People come to Shenzhen looking for the hardware ecosystems to create their, their product. And we provide the basic tools, workspaces, and uh, the network and uh, supply chains. So from here, I think Shenzhen is quite a unique uh, uh, place. It, the host city is like a, a maker space or incubator. And uh, Chai Huo is becoming uh, a ground for a lot of people coming in. And they don't come here with uh, like uh, ordinary uh, community needs. They come here with a purpose. They want to create something. They want to make a device. They want to make it for themselves for their like uh, own industry or they want to sell to the global uh, needs. So we see a lot of people, they come here with more com monetary purpose. They come here with a mission and uh, they fit into our um, understanding of text means. So for the next year, we have much less visit visitors and we want to duplicate these uh, dynamics. So we are making more training courses, teaching more people from a non-engineering background, how do they really use open source hardware to make their first prototype? How could they use uh, IoT to resolve their own problems? How could they like bring STEAM education into their neighborhoods? So we want to, how to say, um, enable more people to not only just explorations, but go all the way into um, a professional role of this making. And also last year we worked with the government. We asked the government what kind of public needs do you have that you should be opening up, inviting more startup or individuals to help you to resolve. So they talked about, a lot about the agricultural needs, about the like uh, um, the sustainability inside of the cities. The government opened the issue and uh, we invited more people to create that the solutions in two days workshop. And they with the feedback back to the government, then they can really look at that and inspire. If possible, they can talk to the team, then turn that into a, a feasible project. So uh, on the people side, I think we have done a lot of uh, in the beginning to uh, encourage the, to promote the maker movement all over Shenzhen and China. And I think it's time for us to go from the possibility to pr productivity. We want to bring more trainings and members and all ready to use solutions to people all, all around the, the country and all over the world. So we don't need to create these solutions like uh, individually in our sectors, but we can share the common know-how and uh, the open tech can go from uh, uh, somewhere like uh, the, the experts and uh, people can save the energy to deploy that in their neighborhoods. And then, uh, so this year, last year we, we suspended the Maker Fair because of the COVID. But this year, as the situation is getting much better, let's put a optimistic case that it's going to be free to travel 
in this fall. So we are pulling back the Make a Fair Shenzhen in, in 2021. It's going to happen in November in Shenzhen. So all of you are welcomed. I will give you, send out the invitation soon. But I hope that to meet you guys personally and to share more about our uh, possibilities in, in the, uh, the industrial solutions and uh, um, get things going. So secondly, it's about the devices. So we have been talking a lot about open source hardware from the day one of City Studio. But looking beyond, I feel that there's no more needs about open devices. It's not a, a single hardware, it's more a hybrid of uh, software, hardware, and uh, open knowledge. So if we look at in the time uh, channels, the open source hardware I oriented from open source software community. People create their first Arduino, they provide their first big board and move all the way and into uh, a big uh, wave for open source hardware creations. In 2010, we have the first Open Hardware Summit. And uh, then the open source hardware goes into two directions as we can see. First, we have more open source chipsets that be more available to the public. You can create an open source uh, um, like a chipsets with risk of five instruction sets and uh, make the chipsets easier than before. But that's not what we are going to talk about today. We are more interested in the open source devices because the software people who is be has been the system, system integrator for new technologies for decades, they are afraid of uh, open source hardware itself. They are more like uh, interesting or more compatible with uh, open source software and devices. So we see by making more hardware into devices, we'll open more doors to system integrators. They are sitting into the digital transformation wave and they can repurpose the device for their own usages. And it's not a fresh new. We see this has been happening for many years. So I think one remarkable one is the safe cost in 20, uh, 2011, when the Fukushima, the radi radiation break leakage, people want to tell if the, the radiation is uh, um, like uh, accurate, accurately reported in my area, they set up the, the equipment and share the data. And following the similar like turns, we have a smart citizen who is doing the environment sensing in a more citizen way. We just heard the, the precursor sharing from Bani Huang to make your own mobile phones and mobile devices. And we have been doing a lot of devices from the speaker, the um, open AI speaker and uh, open Ray phone, Ray servers. We are trying to make more devices. Now it's made, taking more shape. But the most challenging thing we have been trying to do is about industrial IoT because fetching data uh, was easier than before. You have, can have a very cheap and simple Wi-Fi module, connect to Arduino and you can get a sensor data to your cloud services or to your app. But how do you get the real-time data in the field, like outdoors, in the, in the farm fields, or in some uh, hash environment in factories? So we spent quite a, about three years trying to wrestling with that. It's much more challenging, but uh, I, we are very happy that we can get more uh, real-time data from the extreme environment in real time. But uh, to survive in real things, to share with you is that we, we're doing a lot of, uh, uh, how say, tasks beyond our previous back capability, like waterproof at the beginning, then we need to worry about the UV radiations because you put something in the, under sunlight for years, you need to worry how the shell, how the case is really holding off. And also we need to uh, worry about the consistencies because different devices, need, you not only, only to calibrate them, but it, you need to make sure they have the similar results in different uh, temperatures, in different uh, like uh, voltages, environments. And also because we are doing the environment sensing for uh, wizard station, we need to do the uh, wind speed calibrations in real uh, wind tunnels up to 60 meters per second. And of course, the different temperatures, humidities, and then you need to test in different environments to about the long distance communication. This is just the beginning of a lot of stuff. If we are really bring the prototype into field, but we see that happening. 
And uh, this last year we have the the open source uh, um, uh, material station, which is can tell you about the where uh, micro visual data from your locations. You can get the temperature, you can the licensing, wind speed, wind uh, meters, etc. And it has been deployed uh, surprisingly in a lot of smart city uh, applications in China, and we are deploying in the farms in all over the world as well. But it's the the hardware itself is not the device. It's just the beginning that you can get more data. But how do we go beyond to use that data with uh, uh, the the from data you have the information you can like really guide the activations to guide the operations. I think that's the key for the next stage. And we see a lot of people have the shared purposes. We talked about smart system, which is for the environment sensing. And we have helped the uh, Microsoft research to bring the code jumper, which is for visually impaired kids. They cannot see, but they still should own the rights to do the programmings. And uh, we have the tool for them to do that. American Printing House was the biggest uh, uh, printing uh, service for blind, blind people, and they are now resending them. And we have been carrying Af Explorer. It's from a Spanish team from Ariel to uh, make a cheap alternative for spectrum analyzers. And it's also all open for customizations. People repurpose it for antennas, for uh, different uh, uh, spectrums, for AV, uh, uh, audio, remote like debugging, etc. And we have Trace Fly, which was a drone, but you can really use it for swarm uh, autonomous drivings and uh, a lot of practical uh, research has been happening on that. And we just uh, released uh, with uh, B2Doc, which was uh, like a miniature of Boston Dynamics, can work on different domains. It's for education as a start, but we see the possibility that more accessible um, palm size robot dog. And uh, this nano with oscilloscope, it's also from the community, from a, a small team in Guangzhou. They want to, okay, let's just make an oscilloscope, but people can make their own firmware. And also Piper was a like DIY laptop you can build from your Raspberry Pi and have all the courses to explore the physical computing. So we see from here that it's not only about a hardware, it's about the device that could be a replacement of your existing tools but they can also create more new possibilities for the next uh, step. So we are doing a lot of these years uh, to help people to wrap up because you design from open source, it's much easier to wrap up from the small batch. And we work with uh, local supply chains to really deliver the production grade stuff. And uh, let's, Talk about old in in this industries. We were kind of uh, uh, too innovative for City Studio. We're always looking for new digital things that can really be re revolutionized. But after many years, we re realized that there is no new problems. All the challenges they are from the older problems. All the industries they are basically existed for hundreds or thousands of years. I think the key is how can we work with them to bring new solutions to the existing offerings. So cloud and age, they from the IT industry, they are really creating the frontier. They want to digitalize agriculture, they want to digitalize uh, cities, they want to make every, everything smart. And we are very glad they are in the between. In the beginning, it was uh, look, we look at, we take washing machine for example. The washing machine was traditional, but uh, people keep adding new stuff into it. First, they have intricities. Then people want to automations to save more time. They want to tender to different uh, like uh, textiles, so they have more intelligence inside. Now people feel that we need to connect into with the retail. We connected to more smart. Um, smart homes, so it's becoming more autonomous. But uh, we, if we, as a technical bank one, we look inside, there's nothing big changing. It's about the connectivities, it's about the AI, it's about the computings that has been changing the little chip, the little hardware inside the device. So if we keep that route going, we can see a lot of projects 
which is really taking shape. Like we work with uh, these uh, real estate companies a lot, trying to digitalize their communities. For example, you can see the weather forecast from the uh, TV station, but now you can have a micro TV, uh, micro climate forecast from your app. But by, because you live here, you care more about your um, like microclimates. Also, the this the warehouse is uh, having more uh, real time data about their temperature maintenance, about their uh, energy efficiencies. So they are having the the issues for many years now through the open technology. Their product managers, their project managers, see like they can talk to the with the open tech ecosystem and ask for the help and also to like uh, leave out the contracts. We have been talking with big companies from Snyder's, Unilever, Vancouver for for these past few years. And uh, I'm very convinced that they, this could create a lot of opportunities for us and for you uh, to really bring the, the possibilities into productivity. And this list goes on like uh, people need a new gateway for the solar energy systems. They want more computing on the premise. They want more easier to manage the code chain logistics on the move, but also to have the full data chain, even equipped with blockchains, and also to remind you of human beings, like while they're driving to make them uh, uh, sleepy, status more alerted. And also this uh, moving into education, which we work with so different like education bureaus to bring the, um, the latest uh, technology offerings it's not just a, a philosophy or concepts. It's a real gear that we used in the production environment. We teach people how to use them, how to understand the possibility and pre get prepared. So uh, time is short. Back into Nashville, where what city has been trying to do for last many years is our mission is to bring, uh, make the technology open for everyone. We want to become the hardware platform that enable more digital transformations. We work with tech providers to integrate their uh, new tech into open source module. We work with a supply chain in China and globally to provide agile manufacturing services. And now we are making more configurable solutions, more open devices to help the community to bring their, um, to bring their latest uh, solutions to their industries. So we are looking forward to more to work with you guys to create more solutions and also to deploy the latest devices into your neighborhoods, into your vertical uh, needs. So um, I think we don't have much time for real time uh, uh, questions, but I'm, I will be happy to answer them uh, later in the in the offline, uh, in the online uh, notes. And feel free to write me an email if you have more questions or uh, any help needed. And also we are opening for hirings to uh, interns, no matter which country you are, we can work remotely together. So thank you so much for your time and uh, looking forward to initiate, re initiate the conversations and uh, um, bring more open tech to the ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we see um, uh, a lot of people are actually already tweeting uh, about your session here and uh, announcing that uh, Maker Fair uh, is in November in Shenzhen again. So thank you very much for sharing these and all these interesting facts. And I see that uh, there's a question from Harish and I think like for one question we uh, have time. So Harish, would you like to ask your question? Hello. Sure. Um, yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, Eric. Thanks for the talk. I'm just curious about the. I, I think I just saw the answer to that. Uh, risk. Risk five uh, CPUs for uh, any of the seed uh, environment that you're sending up. Mm -hmm. Do you have any C, uh, risk five uh, CPUs solutions? Yeah, we have. Uh... We have providing it with bigger board. It's called Bigger Five. We announced it in January, and it's going to be shipping in a few uh, months, uh, very soon. And we'll keep having more open CPU along the way.
Great, thank you. Yeah, glad you like it. Okay, Eric, uh, it's been a pleasure to have you here uh, and uh, um, at the event, and uh, I can't uh, wait to get back to um, your makerspace. Um, so, which uh, like uh, we always like, we had some meetups there with your support last time. So, um, thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, keep in touch. Um, I think you shared the information and we can reach you everywhere. And I hope we can see more projects and corporations with Seed Studio. It's been a big supporter of open hardware for many years. So thumbs up. Yes, uh, Harris is showing that. And uh, thank you very much, Eric, um, for this talk. Have a nice day and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Stay safe.